Okay, we'll get the idea, but let me just see here. Oh, hey, Tom. Tom's here. Tom, uh, you have to turn your microphone on and stuff. Yeah, he's he's joining. It was uh, audio connecting and and such. Yeah. Hey there. Okay, Tom, you can see our screen, right? Yep. Okay, so we're hoping to get Dan Schultz uh, uh, NHFGV, I think, uh, as well. But let's see if he responds in time. But this is just a quick gut check between um, uh, what we can do uh, for analysis that actually would mean something tangible for Michelle's presentation and what we can do with the constraints of we only have a six kilogram bus, which has to have the payload, uh, communications payload, and it has to have a payload, well, not a payload, it has to have a, it, it has to have a, a spacecraft subsystem for propulsion, okay? So sure, the, two, the two mass budgets have to be equal to the maximum mass budget of the mission, which in our general case is a 6U, whatever they allow us to do 6Us. If we make it out of paper, we can put more stuff. If we make it out of uh, solid blocks of metal, we can't put any stuff. So the question is, whatever 6U can hold and whatever 6U can uh, weigh, that's all we have, okay? All right, sure. Okay, so Michelle, um, <laughs> The red is what you've been discussing, the red orbit. Right. Could you just 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 synopsize that to Tom, who has, you know, have been, who ha is a great candidate for systems engineering role at this stage? Go ahead. Okay. So you want me to summarize what this orbit is? Yeah. Yeah. Why okay. did you? Why? 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 Why were you focusing on this high energy orbit, the red one? Why is that? The highly elliptical orbit or high Earth orbit. The, this is yeah. the one. This is a favorite orbit or a requested orbit uh, for the for the communication service for for the amateur communications or amateur satellite. Um, and so, HEOs in the past have been extremely popular. So, at at the high altitude, it's in the sky for a, n a number of hours for a, a length of time, relatively <laughs> easy to point. Um, and and it moves around, uh, so it gives a variety of uh, distance working opportunities. So this is a very popular orbit, one that we assume that we should, should pursue. The low altitude um, from our discussions with the FCC needs to be above, it needs to be 1250 kilometers or, or above, and this reduces the crossover uh, we, we will know we will not cross over the uh, commercial constellations that are in Leo, and so that was um, uh, received positively. So that's uh, so this particular orbit and the the reasons kind of for it, um, you know, from the community and also from from discussions okay, with the so FCC. This was twelve fifty, right? Yeah, kilometers, okay. right? Yes, kilometers, twelve hundred and fifty okay. kilometers so, or above. So greater than I'm just going to scribble that greater than whatever. Okay. Yeah. But the question I have is that while in space, uh, the Earth is actually rotating around its axis, um, pretty much this uh, this uh, two-dimensional uh, plot of a three-dimensional orbit with the rotating Earth, or is this a snapshot, is really going to complicate Earth station coverage to the point that some regions maybe favored less uh, right. because they're, they're just you know in the wrong plane or they that's, they'll see flat horizon etc 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 that's I mean, right so the, the the question i have was that if you if you if you if you shoot it up there and stays up there for three or four years uh at the very least if not for 10 years uh, which is more likely um at that high altitude um because it's got engines and we can do a bang up job of delivering it to that assigned trajectory. What happens if sat number two opportunity uh, comes up because we've made a great hardware, it's working and people say, okay, fine, let's risk, let's fly yours a bit, um, give you a chance. But if you, if you were to, um, if you were to uh, kind of uh, think of the use cases and we, we need to discuss this, but I'm just going to, uh, I'm trying to pick a color here. No, I'm trying to pick a, damn color to make a box. I would just like to make a box, guys. 
Okay, there's one satellite. There's another satellite. Yeah, They're going round and round. You, you wouldn't have it on the same orbit. You would pick another inclination. Why wouldn't we want to do it on the same orbit? Well, I think that you, if you had the, if you, we were fortunate enough, and um, no, you, you know, and we not, were, not, and not. we were, if we were fortunate enough to be able to to field three satellites, that we would want them on different orbits to cover as much of the Earth as possible. Right. Well, it, it, okay. From your from your logic, um, I gather it's a no brainer that we're going to have. If we have one, we're going to have several. So, I'm all for that. Right. We should and try our best. You're building, I mean, you're building one, a hardware, you know, one is doing. good, and but yeah. I think that we should really go for it. We should try to have multiple ones. And right, right. But what I'm trying to say is that the elliptical orbit, you know, is not appropriate for three or four, but it is appropriate if we uh, say, for example, uh, put put some here put some here put some here i mean basically if we demark if we claim some space for our own missions some orbit for our own missions then we can change the parameters of the thing but as long as the uh, orbit too far away from the speaker yeah. sorry as as long as the orbital trajectory uh is defined for us we can we can improve the specifications of the transponders and the platform over time. That's the, right. the advantage of a circularized orbit or a high altitude, low elliptical orbit, high altitude. I mean, see. Um, okay, so uh, uh, I, I don't have any argument with anything you've said, except that the community is asked for a HEO. So the, pro the, the proposal that we have is a HEO and we are, well, well, it's a high, well, it's a high altitude. Yes. Not, they're not concerned about the eccentricity, right? It is concerned with the eccentricity. You can see it from the from the proposal. So it's a it's a HEO. So I think we should keep that if we want to add a circular orbit like you have here in purple. Um, that would be something that we would add. So our our goal here for this particular proposal is to nail yeah. the HEO first. Because okay, um, that is that is what the community wants. Okay, let me just uh, um, let me just do this because I'm thinking in terms of proportional system uh, requirement. Okay, I'm just doing this. Okay, hold on a second. Here's our little Earth, um, and here is say 1,200 arbitrary kilometers with yeah. a uh, with a uh, you know large uh, you know this is a, this yeah. is. Um, uh, Tom, just help me out mathematically. An ellipse that is elongated in one of its axes has eccentricity not one, right? Yeah, I think a circle is zero. So yeah, it, it approaches one. I mean, that's... So, so, but what I'm trying to say is that if I were to redraw this, if I were to say, just con for convenience's sake, take this ellipse, and if I were to use a different color, and I said, hey guys, Let's make a circle like this. I want to change this to color. Damn it. There. See that thing what I'm doing? That is going to deliver uh, approximately, I have to make it slightly bigger. I'm just doing this a scale. Okay, hold on a second. There we go. There. Okay. So this is the same altitude, but a circular, uh, approximately circular orbit here. Let me just make it better, bigger. There. That's what I was referring to, the purple. So, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Tom, help me describe it in mathematical terms what I just did. The green is, uh, ellip uh, the, the, the value of E is closer to 1, and the, and the purple is, value of E is closer to 0. Is that correct? Right, right. Okay, and E is equal to what? Um, just Let me just type it out here. Um, uh, oh. Let me just uh, read. So Sorry, you've, you've drawn an orbit that's out at geo. No, 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 it's not geo. It's, it's not. It's not geo. It's at no, thirty-two. It's just, that's like thirty-two thousand kilometers on the apogee. So, I, no, I mean, no, no, no. It, it, it can be. You're drawing a circular orbit that's way out there, and we're not. No, gonna, not, we're not going to no, do no. that. It, it's not the scale. That's right. It's not the scale at all. It's not geo. Okay, it's just so any point in space. I I think that the 
what we need to do is take care of the HEO first and that the that we're going to get very different numbers for propulsion for a circular orbit of any type. And we're no, going we to have, no, no, we will no, no, have no, no, problems no. with circular, high circular orbits are, are something that you have. No, 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 wait, wait a second, you're talking, to, you're talking to the proportional designers. I'm telling you, no, the answer is no. It will actually cost us less, uh, uh, I mean, overall uh, uh, delta V budget to deliver a circular machine than actually to do elliptical. I mean, I'm, I'm quite confident of that. When I'm saying it, I'm, I've done the math long, many times, hundreds over. What I'm trying to I say, okay, the, let me tell you that, that the that altitude. That may be true, but the FCC is going to, to be, um, they, they will not like it. <laughs> that That's the word that we've gotten. So we've, we've been able to get, and the community wants a, a HEO. I would really like a geo to straight to graveyard. That's but what I would not like. Geo. To... We're not, but no, 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 but, that's, but I'm just geo. I'm just letting you know. I would like to work on a geo straight. Yeah, to but graveyard. this is not a geo. I'm not. I'm not. This is not a geo by any means. It's just that you've drawn it that way because our our geo orbits go out that far. So you've drawn something that to me looks like is geo. No, no. I, 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 okay, if you want to see geo, uh, sorry, uh, what am I doing here? Just hang on a second. I'll show you geo. Geo starts. Where the hell would, why would it, okay, I want to do a circle. Okay, I want to do a circle that is like, geo is like, this is like infinite amount of, uh, you know, this this is not even geo. The geo is like way out there. I'm talking about like 15, 20,000, 30,000, sorry, 23,000 um, It's 35,000 kilometers per, right. out, so out to Right, so let's say that, let's say that, if let's you, say that. If you look at the proposal that we have, the HEO spacecraft that we're working on, goes up out about that far. When you mentioned tw about 1200, that's the, that was the that's the that low the, altitude the, and it goes the all the way it goes all the way out to 32 like 32,000 kilometers. So, you know, I, I it's great that that we can do us talk about a circular orbit, but we, I think we need to nail the HEO first. So, we need okay. to talk about the highly elliptical orbit. Okay, um Tom Tom you were saying yeah, it, it, whatever orbits they're looking at, they, the satellites can go all sorts of different orbits. It doesn't have to be squeezed into something. If there's a proposal for a heel or an ellipse from 1250 to 32,000, that's fine. Yeah, that's what we're working with. That's what we've been asked My question, to do. It's, but, that's that's the Jan but, King's Michelle, original proposal. Uh, hold, on, hold on a second, Michelle. My, my question is, if, you're, if your perigee is 1200 mm -hmm. or above 1200, why is your apogee near geo to begin with? That's what the community wants. That's what they've had in the past. And it works really but, well for the amateur satellite service. It provides it'll give a, you it provides uh, extended. A good, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, I mean, it, it gives you extended uh, time over one spot on the Earth, sort of, with that, that high apogee. You know, it takes a long time then, so you get better communication for it. And yes. to have other satellites on the same orbit doesn't necessarily help because they'd, they'd be at the lower point at that time. So that, that's why you've got different inclinations for the others if you had, say, space, three spacecraft. I mean, if you don't have approval for a geo or something, you go with that highly elliptical orbit, and at least it extends the time when your satellite's in view, and you get more hours out of it. Correct. Yeah, it's like the Molnaya thing. Correct. No, I, I understand what the Molnaya is. I understand what the this classical high okay elliptical not energy you see the question is that when you talk about medium uh meo leo uh hdo the, the abbreviations either are like earth orbit eo high medium and low which means just an altitude but they don't refer to the fact and you could be very careful michelle that you when you're talking about propulsion system design i can deliver a high altitude very high altitude circular orbit easier than making a HEO as shown here where it's uh, uh, you know it's an elongated ellipse I'm just saying that if we if the period of the satellite is 22 hours a day then it will it will uh, cross over uh, the same arc in the sky slowly drifting uh, in relation to the earth's uh, you know uh, rotation but in a known manner so what I'm trying to say is that if you said that, look, you want 24 hour orbit, that's a geo position. If you want higher than 24, like 26 hour orbit, 
you go higher. If you want to go lower by 22 hours or 21 hour orbit, circular, then it, it can it can cover many different places on, on under the planetary, you know, under the planetary suborbital point. So I'm just saying that the propulsion system uh, definitely doesn't have to be one or the other. It can be both at the same time. We can change our mission if you should decide it. Okay, the, the proposal is a HEO. So that would be the priority to figure out and to, to calculate. Well, it, HEO is, a, then you gotta go into details and saying, do you want an apogee or not? If you don't want an apogee, if you wanna just keep the apogee the same as perigee, it's a circular orbit, no big deal. It's still a HEO, but it'll just stay up there 22 hours, 21 hours, 20 hours a day. Okay, I mean, we just so have to define. Go, if it's defined in the proposal and it has a, a high apogee and the perigee has been modified since 2014. So the, the original proposal, which predates all of these constellations, um, had a, a pretty low perigee, like down to 550 kilometers. Yeah. Um, but now, uh, based on the feedback from, from meeting with the FCC and listening carefully to um, what they've told us, um, Jan King and others have said it needs to be raised to 1250. So 1250 out to something like 32,000. And that is what the community wants. So that's our baseline. Um, and that's what we need to take care of first. If we want to also do a circular orbit, and I hope we do, uh, because you've, you've raised some good, good points, then we can do that as a second uh sort of a second orbit proposal um, um this is your 8th august um uh, thing uh do you happen to remember um is this the uh are these the numbers we're going to be starting working with to for calculations uh yeah you can also look at the original the the very in the this is the modified one like you said from, yeah. from august yeah. if you look go back to the repo you can find jan king's original um yeah Sure. document as well which so is uh right hof there. right yeah you yeah, see this says foundational document by J yeah that's the uh, this is the original one so this is just just like we did just a little while ago with with the propulsion repository where we made yeah. the first yeah. cut okay. i did the same thing here okay so you can so, so this was uh initially this page the second third page um um was mentioned as thirty six thousand kilometers Yes, that's the link that was uh, the. So if you go page forward, you can see the orbit, the same orbit page that we have there. So here's our initial one, and here's the final one. So see, we take we need to take these numbers, and we need to adjust them based on the feedback that we have received. So instead of so, having um, a final so, orbit where the perigee yeah. is 500 kilometers, that's no longer. Um, that's that's something yeah, that we need to change. Okay. Yeah. So, so Tom, so Tom, um, yeah, thirty-five seven eighty-six is the apogee, and the perigee will be above twelve fifty. Right. And before we go any further on this, I'm, I all I did is, is, is pass along the change to the perigee. I don't know enough about orbital mechanics and orbits to know whether or not that's a silly thing to say. Like I know that you can't, you don't get something for nothing, in physics, right? You simply don't. So if there is some other better altitude to have as a high altitude, if there's a, if there's, a, if they both need to be adjusted, then you all are going to be have to be the ones to, to tell me that. You know, I, I what I don't want to do is is get us in a situation where we have, uh, a, a, an expensive silly orbit, because we changed one number and we didn't change the other. If they're asking for a heel, we can certainly look at that. Yeah. Yes, and they the community is very firm on this. They want a highly elliptical orbit. They value this a lot. The pre, if you look on the the prior AMSAT HEO missions page six, you can see that there are these previous um, uh, you know satellites. These are celebrated and beloved and legendary now. They, people love these orbits. We don't have them anymore. All we have is pretty much LEO, and we have the QO100, which is the one um, GEO spacecraft. Um, 
and it was a, a great deal, but commercial. So, um, you know, it's a, I guess you would call it hosted payload on a geo. Okay, so um, I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to, um, uh, Tom. Um, Wait, that 1988 picture there had a thruster in it. What were they using for propulsion on that? Chemical. Yeah, these are, that's right. They're, um, Chemical. that was a, uh, a mono, mono propellant. In fact, let me get you a link to the engineering for. Okay. You before the, you do that, oh, you just go ahead. That, I'll I'll do it. I'll do this to by myself. Yeah, I mean you can email it to or whatever, but I'm just going to say I'll put it in Tom, chat. Uh, yeah, yeah, Tom. Well, uh, Tom, I have to educate him. Tom, <laughs> yeah. I I know most people don't think in 3D terms, but the remote sensing universe of small spacecraft manufacturers. I was with several companies, as you might know. They, they basically put spacecraft wherever they want to and need to. So I was going to hope that if I'm going to be uh, a team lead on this propulsion thing, I was going to say, well, we can't, we can't ignore the fact that if we're talking about equatorial plane, which is this orange, uh, orange outer circle, we can actually reorient the plane of this uh, 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 green uh, thing we can actually go, and I'm going to just try to do this. We could actually go, like, sorry, not this guy. Where is it? Like, uh, we can go above the the plane. We can straddle the plane. We can even, we can even, uh, you know, pretty much go in a north south kind of inclination. That's going to be high. It's going to be a different look angle on the horizon, but we don't have to go near the equatorial belt where we'll be. Uh, uh, chased by all the broadcasters and will be chased by all the uh, entrenched operators, we can actually go at any inclination relative to the uh, equatorial plane and still get okay. coverage. And quite okay. high coverage in long time. So it depends upon in 3D space where we rotate the plane of the uh, satellite, don't you think? Um, yeah, I'm, well, I mean, it depends on what area of the ground you want coverage. Just thing it's not always going to be over the same area of the ground. Right. The, um, the target here, uh, to propose this to JAMSAT would be uh, Australia and Japan. Right. So Australia is north, uh, south and Japan is north. So therefore I know that even America's, uh, a Western coast mid Midwest to the West would really enjoy it, Hawaii would enjoy it, if the orbital track were not classical 23.5 degrees inclination, which is the equatorial belt, but rather in a polar type of orbit. High altitude polar. Okay. I'm happy to get whatever we can possibly get, but you know. Well, with propulsion, with propulsion we can place it on any track, but yeah. really, if I drew it out, we would actually straddle from South Pole to North Pole. Yeah, I, I hear you. I'm just, all I can do is present to you, um, you know, what the community wants. And and, and and the second part is that I assure you, if we did that, at that height, uh, the look angle uh, or the elevation angle from, say, the mid of America, uh, Midwest of America would be, what, uh, the, the, at the lowest, uh, 10, 20 degrees at the highest, 30, 35 to 40 degrees, you sh you'll be okay. That's the look angle. That's the uh, elevation angle of the antennas. Good. But in order to propose it to JAMSAT, it's got to cover Japan really well. No, it will. It, it okay. will. But America is also, you know, a big Good. market running for HEO, right? That's exactly right. And it would be so, great, so, to, so it'd Tom, be great uh, to do both. But then what all of the work has to go into making something that we can get licensed okay. so, so having a, so a really really good mission plan and having a very yeah. good deorbit plan you know and that's the key so okay so tom other than the delta v requirements uh, which are numeric numbers the positioning of the orbital plane is going to be critical to cover the, the australia japan corridor but with uh with a, a look angle that's amenable uh, uh, from the ground of Midwest to the Hawaiian Islands. All right. 
So we, you can use GMAT to do this very efficiently if you just begin to familiarize yourself with the open source NASA GMAT tool. It's not that difficult. Okay. So you can choose any of the, of the parameter perigee of above 1250, any parameter apogee close to geo, but as long as the plane is of the orbit is is tilted so that it has a north average north south track uh you know plus and minus a few degrees here and there it will be always covering australia and japan as the primary market secondary market will be uh uh, uh us midwest to uh, uh, hawaii that gives us only a few countries to deal with in terms of frequency coordination all right yeah and on the other side of the world, on the other side of the world, as the spacecraft, you know, kind of, you know, is not is going to be re drifting ever so slightly, um, you know, we we we'll, we'll, we can deal with the spillovers quite easily. It's not going to be that much with, with such low power on the transmit side from space. Uh, all right. So we we avoid Russia, we avoid India, we avoid African countries, we avoid EU countries, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, all right. Okay, but GMAT is going to be here. We've got to do a GMAT presentation sooner or later. No, not just numbers. It's got to be the orbit has to be visualized. Yes, GMAT is um, is a great tool. I think that that's the right choice. Okay, but anyway, I can help you with GMAT. I'm, I'm very well trained in GMAT and STK, Tom. But you, you got to start with some calculations first, okay? All right. All right. So uh, from the takeaway, what did you uh, come up with? Uh, you know, uh, of our earlier discussion today, you want to tell uh, uh, Michelle something? Well, we we'll probably want to size what what can we do with um, a given budget? Saying, okay, here is how much mass is available for you for a propulsion system. Okay, well, we want to look and say, what can we do for an orbit? Uh, you got to ask, how are you going to get into this heel orbit, or where do you get dropped off? And okay, whose responsibility is it to, uh, like, raise that orbit or get that high, um, you know, elliptical orbit? How big's the payload? And all right, then we're going to try to determine what can, performance can we get out of some thrusters? What do we need? Whether it's electric propulsion or something else. How long do we have to get there? But then, you know, calculate things. All right, well, if you're going to do orbital maneuvers, you probably translate that into delta V requirements. How much speed do you need to, to change things? So you figure, where are we going from? Where do we have to end up? Okay, what performance are we going to need? What can we do? Or for that matter, or if you have to do this change, how much uh, mass do we need that's available? So... Those are the things we'd want to ask and then calculate, saying, yes, this is what it will take to perform those maneuvers. Uh, might ask about, what about drag makeup? We want a three or four year life expectancy uh, that orbit might need some boosting from time to time. What are those requirements? Well, that, that can be evaluated and determined. Uh, the orbit, well, we'll have, okay, we'll have to consider that as well. Not sure what propulsion system is the best, but you determine all right, some delta V numbers for lifetime of the mission, what, what's the total we need, and then based on some performance out of some thruster system, tied pretty heavily to the exhaust velocities that you can achieve, then we can determine all right, how much mass do we need. So that's kind of the direction we'd look in. That's what I was thinking. Uh, be nice to know from your proposal then what were you planning on starting from a particular orbit and saying okay we'll deliver such and such orbital change maneuvers including the orbit is that what you were looking at yeah i think that's going to be expected all right we're, we will be expected to have that and to in order to uh, get along i'm getting copies of all of this documentation i mean i i, I once i'm back in dc tomorrow i'll prepare another document set and tom can spend a few days uh, reading through it methodically to to come up with a set of trade uh, study questions beginning with dirt simple if we had all uh, five kilograms of uh, whatever propellant available um can we utilize it for something because that's the easiest thing because I, I do you happen to know uh michelle your mass budget that you 
have mentally allocated for your antenna? No, and no, I don't. Um, we we really don't know that. We discussed this briefly um, a couple of weeks ago when we when you were looking at the numbers from the original proposal, and it sounds like the um, that they were a little bit high per you. Um, like, was it two? Two yeah. point something so what, kilograms what per, suggest, per what, you, what? and you said that that the current the current guidelines or or, or expectations I, are like down to one point one kilograms per per you. You know, so that's I, I, all I, I, that's all I really have in terms of of, okay. of mass. So so my question is that the like avionics payload, CMDH computer and the transceiver and the antenna and the solar arrays, we got to assign budgets for that mass budgets whatever's left we want for propulsion if that's okay with you i think that's the way it's going to be i think you know if you, if we can't complete uh you know a mission plan that includes due orbiting then all bets are off right so right so so what, what i'm asking is that the bulk of the uh internal volume uh might be all dedicated to propulsion well let's run the numbers and see what we have to work with Okay, that's fine. So, uh, uh, because we'll be power uh, uh, positive or power budget positive, we may not need so much batteries, right, up there, because we're always going to be in sunlight most of the times. Oh, all right. Okay. I mean, that's just the way it is. I mean, we won't have earth shadow concerns out there, not too much, I would think. So we can okay. reduce the battery budget, and we can just change the budget to propulsion. The more the amount of gas that we have, the more things we can do up there to to complete our missions. Is is there someone building the satellite? How's that going to work? No, not yet. We're gonna we're gonna define it first. Yeah, right. we, the proposal drives into um, you know. So so the answer is no. No one no one is building it yet. Um, the proposal is going to enable. Yeah, we're going to be defining the system. Uh, Tom, and in, in system to engineering terms, we're at uh, uh, before the uh, phase A studies. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, will it be outsourced or something? No. Eventually, we'll be doing it ourselves. Well, I think that we'll be involved. Um, I definitely don't think that we'll be building it by ourselves. The, the, the aspiration here is that... Um, Organizations that have experience in building spacecraft will say, yes, this proposal looks good. Yes, we will help you out and that we form a consortium and we get it done. Um, but we are going to be contributing wherever we can. Uh, our our particular area of expertise is communications. And, uh, you know, that's that's what we know the most about. Um, so partnering up with, with organizations that know a whole lot more about well, yeah, mechanical and thermal well, and propulsion uh, and um, things like that, or uh, that's what's going to happen. Michelle, with Tom and I involved, you actually have proficiency in another field called propulsion. Yeah, I know. I this would I would not assume that uh, it would fall all on on you all. So we would we would get as many people involved in uh, working on it as we possibly could. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Do you have any more questions? I've got to get some food in me. I've been you know I've been busy for a while. So no, um, this, and, and, this is good. I think there's some documents uploaded. We'll have to continue to review that. Yeah, no. Uh, I, yeah, I'm going to finish the repo uh, build. The repo is not done yet, uh, Michelle. Uh, I need to organize the old repo documents and the paper references into different folders, and I'm going to put a table of contents into the readme file so that you know one one can one can uh, peruse the whole collection of things that we need. Okay. Right. So in a couple of days, it'll be ready for release. And like, you know, but right now we're building it, whatever it is. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, all right, then I got to take off and uh, uh, Michelle, if that's okay, then yeah. then um, that we'll, yeah, we'll good, talk uh, in the next. Yeah, good work. I think it looks good. Okay. I'll stay, um, it, it, it'll, I'll stay on the call to catch anybody yeah. else that, that yeah, wants to yeah. join and talk. And, right. uh, you know, in case Dan writes me back, you know. Um, did anybody even try to come in uh, in the meantime? Somebody any, waiting in the lobby or you just opened no, it up? No, no. I, I opened it up. It's uh, it, we'll, uh, we'll just keep having these meetings and, and we'll 
yeah we got where there was a lot of interest from um libra space foundation but most of those people it is one o'clock in the morning for them so our next meeting will move it uh, to where they can they can make it right i gotta go bye all right see you soon Okay, see, so you've got an open meeting, uh, I guess. Yeah, yeah, this it's an open meeting. Uh, yeah, I didn't see anyone else. Would we expecting other people to, to join in or? No, ma mainly us. And then I opened it up to um, I let the ORI people know and uh, let the Libra Space Foundation folks know. So there was lots of there was some responses and some questions. But like I said, for most of those folks, it's one o'clock in the morning for this particular time slot. So what we try to do is move move the slot around um, and have it at different times of the day, so that different uh, time zones can participate. So this people are at one a.m. in the morning. You mean they're over in Europe? I guess correct. Oh, all right, all right. Yeah, I figured, okay, it's 9 p.m. here. You want to get much later, you're swimming in the Atlantic or something. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Indeed. Yes, yeah. But, it, uh, for example, for 10 o'clock in the morning here, for me, is around 5 p.m. for them. So that's another uh, pretty common time that we have meetings. And then, um, you, know, um, you know, I'll get up whenever to, to yeah. host a, a meeting. Happy to do that. Okay, so I guess AMSAT has had satellites before. Where or communications? Well, who made their previous satellites? Did do they get it from somewhere else, procure it, or do they have hobbyists that that put it together on their own? Uh, both. There's been um, a variety of different sort of construction paths. Um, some of them are are very much made by amateur enthusiasts and hobbyists and experimenters and then some uh the a lot of the parts and engineering were donated uh, from commercial companies so a variety of different ways to get the uh, end results yeah because um I, i'm not exactly sure where i'd go if i wanted a, a spacecraft it's not like i got a machine shop to uh, crank one out <laughs> some a lot of this can be built um in a well-equipped machine shop i mean that's what essentially what JPL does. Of course, their machine shop is extremely well equipped. Um, and there are companies that sell space frames and sell, yeah. this, you know, yeah. systems, subsystems. Um, and we may end up doing a variety of, you know, we, we may end up uh, going with a commercial partner to build, build for us. We may end up doing a lot of the work ourselves. We'll just have to see. Um, because there's lots of different ways to to get these uh, sort of circuits and and materials done. Yeah, my uh, impression would be well, my first uh, Im impression say, okay, what's out there now that I can go buy and then put together mm -hmm. something that's already made, just yes. slap it together. Yes, as and that is a smart way to do it. So whatever whatever is available for us to purchase, we should look hard at that. And it would have to be, um, there would have to be some com really compelling reason for us to try to build it in a garage somewhere. Like there would have to be a really good reason for, for, for not mm. getting something that is available. Um, you know, yeah, so yeah. If you, I mean, if you look at the original, the, the proposal from 2014, it's all, almost all, uh, you know, these are off-the-shelf components. These are horn antennas, and they're the, all the ADAC stuff is, you know, from named parts from commercial companies and and such. Um, you know, so the boards, like the communications boards, those are those are things that are going to have to be custom. Um, but we'll need, we're going to 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 get some uh, a lot of help with that to make sure that they're durable enough for for space. You know, so. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, your 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 instincts are are uh, spot on. Your your instincts are right on this. Yeah, I mean, I haven't actually had my hands on hardware uh, going to space, but yeah, that's. I mean, why reinvent the wheel if you can find something? I mean, I exactly. think there are a whole bunch of su suppliers of small parts. Yeah, there are. There's a a lot of choice out there, 
right now. And um, I think that we are, we're in a really good position to, um, to, to be able to, to pull something like this together with the right consortium of, um, of organizations of like mind. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to being able to finish the presentation and then, and then show it to, um, to people that are interested in it. Okay. Well, what's the, the timeline or time frame? That as soon as we can, they're, they're you know, um, we're, we're each, each week that we meet, we make a, a bunch of progress. The, we're going to present this uh, to, to the community. The, this particular proposal will be presented. It's work in progress, obviously, you can, as you can look through it. Um, but that'll be in mid-September at Ham Expo. Okay. And then, you know, just doing this in the open and trying to get as much feedback as possible in order to get, uh, you know, uh, as, as wide, um, you know, knowledge base, um, uh, comment and critique and, and, and good ideas and involvement and support as possible at this stage is, uh, can only help us. So. Okay. Gives me an idea. All right. Well, thanks. You bet. Okay. Yeah. So don't feel like you have to, to hang out for, for the rest of the hour. I'm going to go ahead and keep the call open just in case uh, people join, join late, um, you know, but, but don't feel like, don't feel like you have to sit up with me. Uh, okay. Well, it's what, 630 there, right? Yeah, it's early here and it's uh, a little bit later there. So. I, 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 yeah. So you're in, you're, you're in California, is it? Mm -hmm. That's right. What, what, what part? San Diego. Oh, far, far south. Okay. All right. Well, I got another work day tomorrow. So yeah, best I wishes gotta... on, on that. And uh, thank you so much for your, for your help and your expertise. Okay. Well, thanks. You bet. Okay. Bye. See you soon.